Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve a numerical on double angle strut. In previous videos we have solved the numerical of single angle strut. Now let's see how you can solve a numerical on double angle strut. So let's start with the video. See the problem statement says design a double angle discontinued strut to carry a factored load of 135 kN the center to center distance between the length of a strut is 3 meter angles are provided or placed back to back on opposite side of gusset plate so that is what they have given now what they have what you have to find out let's see see it says design a double angle discontinuous strut means you have to design a particular section which should carry a factor load of at least this one 135 kilonewton of load it should carry so what i will do i'll first write down all the steps which will be required to calculate this then we will solve them one by one see the first step because you should write down all the steps which will be required see steps are fixed for solving a particular problem so that's why first i will give all the steps which will be solved by which we will be solving this uh, particular numerical and then we will start with the actual solve okay so the first step is given data write down whatever is the given data that is the first step okay then what is the next step see they have said it is a double angle discontinuous strut so for that you will have to assume certain section so for assuming certain section what you will do you will assume a value of lambda so i will write here assume lambda that is slenderness ratio or you can assume the value of fcd also you can either assume the value of lambda or you can assume the value of fcd okay so you will get certain value of stress here then the third step in third step you have to try certain section so how you can try a section I'll give you the formula area will be equal to stress upon sorry it is different it will be load upon stress see it is the basic formula it is only the conversion here see I'll show you the conversion how you got this formula you know what is the value of stress it is force upon area that's it okay force divided by the area I'll write it here okay so if you want to find out the area what it will be it will be force upon stress so area will be force divided by stress or you can say, write it as load upon stress so what is force they have given it is pu generally it is denoted by pu and stress will be this fcd so you can by by this formula you can find out the value of area here and for example this will be area required for example you got certain value so you should try that section from the steel table we should have at least this much area which you have calculated so this will be your required area only okay so you have tried the section you try section from steel table and write down all the properties i'll write it here from steel table write down the properties all the properties you have to write down here okay that is your next step that is third step then what is the next step that will be your fourth step fourth step will be classification of section now this term or this thing is new to you i'll tell you how you can solve this classification of section just remember i'll be using table number two here table two of is 800 2007 so you keep ready this table you should open this table with you so that it will be very easy to understand for you okay and it is given on page number 18 of this is code page number 18 okay so you open this table i'll tell you how to classify your section then you find out the slenderness ratio slenderness ratio so what is the formula of slenderness ratio see the formula is lambda is equal to kl by r minimum that you know now this time this k value it will be taken from page number 48 i'll tell you why you, you have to take the value of this page number uh, this particular k value from page number 48 i will also mention the clause number here see the clause number is 7.5.2.1 that is the clause number which you will be using for value of k then the next point is buckling a class whatever is the buckling class you mentioned that my buckling class is so and so but remember 
for angle section as it is a double angle word angle is used here so for angle sections buckling class will always be c c buckling class you you should remember this for angle okay for angle i'll write here so for angle sections always the buckling class will be what c only then the next step what you will do you will find out the design compressive stress in short i will write it as fcd design compressive stress and this fcd you will get it from page number 42 okay now the last step what you have to find out you have to find out the strength that is design strength of the section so design strength is given by pd and it will be equal to area into fcd but as your section is double angle so you can take two times area into fcd will be as it is which you have calculated in the seventh step okay now your pd whatever you have calculated it should be greater than the pu which they have given in the numerical because you want to calculate you want to find out that section which should be capable of resisting this 135 kilo newton of the load so you should try that section or you should design that section which should be greater than this means given load should be less and your design load should be more okay it means your strength should be more obviously so these are the steps that you have to follow now i will solve the numerical one by one and i will tell you how you can solve this type of numerical so the first step is what it is given data i will start with the given data now so the very first step is given data so whatever is the given i'll write it here given data so what is given just read the numerical and tell me what is the given see it is a double angle discontinuous strut strut means it is a type of compression member to carry a factor load of 135 kilo newton so pu is given it is 135 i will change the color i will use this color only for the headings so i'll de delete this one and let's come back to black one so pu is what it is 135 kilo newton so i'll put pu is equal to 135 kilo newton this is my pu now center to center distance between the length of strut that is l l is given it is what three meter okay then the angles are placed back to back on a same side on the opposite side of gusset plate diagram is not necessary even if you want to draw the diagram it will be look like this it will look like this this is your gusset plate and this is your first angle and there there is another angle like this so it will be like this only double angles are there because we have not tried the section that's why i'm not drawing the uh, section now because we have not tried certain sections so you cannot draw the diagram right now so only these two things are given so that's it now what is the second step i have told you let's come back to the previous step what is the sec second step see you have to assume the value of lambda or fcd you can assume either fcd or you can assume the value of lambda okay that is what it is assume either you can assume lambda or fcd okay so i'll assume lambda value so i have given you one table if you remember in the previous videos i have given you this table for double angle you can assume the value of lambda in between 180 to 120 and it is not like that you should assume only this value you can change it but this is the general values which i have given so in between uh, for double angle you can assume 80 to 120 130 up to 130 you can also go okay for double angle so what i'll do i'll assume a value of lambda is equal to i'll put it here assume lambda value is equal to 130 or in other words you can use fcd is equal to approximately 75 newton per mm square i'm just assuming this okay and why i'm assuming this you just go to the is code and open page number 42 of is 800 and 2007 so you will find out that for the value of 130 lambda the fcd value is approximately equal to 75 or else i will show you wait a minute let me show you that value see for 130 value here it is the 130 value what is the value of uh for 250 approximate value is 74.3 so i am assuming just 75 it is just an approximate value see, because see we are trying the section now so it is not like that you should assume only the out exact value you can assume 
any value okay so for 130 fcd i am assuming the value of 75 from which table i got this table 9c page number 42 okay coming back to our numerical so this is the value of fcd here i got the value of fcd what is the next step then you can now try the section so next step is step number third okay so i will find out the value of what is the required area here next step will be try section and which section i'll try because i have to try that section that should be capable of resisting at least 135 kilonewton of load okay so i'll try certain section i'll put the formula here the formula will be like this area will be equal to load upon fcd or divided by fcd okay what is the value of load here it is 135 it is in kilonewton so into 10 raised to 3 will be in newton divided by value value of fcd it is 75 already so 135 divided by 75 will give you a value of 1800 mm square okay 1800 mm square but remember this is 1800 is for double angle for single angle how much will be the value i'll put it here for single angle area required will be equal to this 1800 divided by 2 that is 900 okay that that much area is required for the angle for single angle so why i am using single angle i'll multiply it by 2 in the last step but i am taking the properties that's why i am using single angle here I, in final step i'll multiply it by 2 because they are double angle okay so don't take tension so i'll put all the uh, see i'll try this section i'll use try uh, see there are various sections if you open the steel table you will find out that there are so many sections so what i will do i'll try this section 2 isa it will be double isa and the section will be 65 65 8 65 by 65 by 8 mm so what is its area you can open the steel table and you can check what is the area so area is 976 mm square i am taking it from the steel table okay then ryy value it is also given that rzz is also same and its value is 19.6 mm again i'm from where i am taking this it i am taking it from the steel table okay don't forget and CZZ and CYY they have given it is 18.9 mm okay so these are the values now you can go back to the steps and you can check what is the next step I have told you that's why I told you you should follow only the steps what is the procedure you should follow to calculate the final step now the first step that is classification of section so I'll put classification of section I have told you which uh, which IS code is used so it IS code is same and which page number is used that is also told you that's why uh, that, that is what I have told you okay classification of section I'll put classification of section as it is now what page number I have told you for this see the page number is 18 you can open IS code and you can check what is given in page number 18 and table which table i am be i will be using table number two okay now i'll open that table first and then i will put the criteria see it has three criteria. first one is b by t then second one is d by t and last one third criteria is b plus d by t these three values you have to find out and let me go back to the table number two so that it will be easily understandable by you so uh, why these values are uh, useful because we have to try the section we have to classify the section okay so coming back to the is code wait a minute see this is the this is the uh, is code page number and it is page number let me show you the page number first see the page number is 18 here okay now you have to find out which section you are, are you using see i am using single angle or a double angle okay with components so and so they have given so i will be using this so i will have to refer these values b by t d by t and b plus d by t let me zoom this for you so the first criteria is b by t second criteria is d by t and third criteria is b plus d by t 
now what it says this is the ratio and there are different types of sections plastic compact and semi compact okay so first two are not applicable only this criteria should be fulfilled 15.7 epsilon 15.7 epsilon and 25 epsilon okay now what is this epsilon so they have given here in the notes epsilon is equal to 250 by fy raised to 1, 1 by 2 or raised to 0.5 so this value will be 1 only you can put it 250 by 250 will be 1 and 1 raised to 0.5 will be 1 so that means your value which you have calculated first you have to calculate b by t and it should be less than 15.7 epsilon then you should calculate the value of d by t it should be less than 15.7 epsilon and the last one b plus d by t it should be less than 25 so i will calculate these three values and from which from which table i have got this it is table number two and page number is what page number is 18 now coming back to our numerical so what is b here we have tried a section 65 65 8 so 65 will be my b and 8 will be my d okay so what is the value here it is 8.125 and what was the criteria it should be less than 15.7 epsilon that is the first criteria let's see the second criteria it is also d because d is also same 65 so 65 by t it will also be same 8.125 and it should be less than 15.7 epsilon okay and the third criteria is b plus t b plus d that is 65 plus 65 by 8 it should be first let's calculate it it is 16.25 okay and it should be less than 25 epsilon where epsilon is what epsilon is 1 or you can write down like this 250 by fy raised to half or 0.5 so it is 1 only now all these criteria are fulfilled so for that if you if you can open that is code you will find that my section is semi compact section so i'll put here semi compact section that is what it is over now that is the step number four my type of section or my classification of section is now semi compact now what is the next step i have told you step number fifth you have to calculate the slenderness ratio slenderness ratio and i have also told you which is code page number will be used i have told you that page number 42 will be 48 page number will be used now why 48 i'll show you page number 48 let me first put the formula here lambda is equal to k into l divided by r minimum okay now what is k what is l and what is r minimum see k you don't know k you have to take it from page number 48 i'll also mention the clause number here clause number will be 7.5.2.1 okay now coming back to that clause now see this it is page number 48 of is code clause number is 7.5.2.1 it says for double angle discontinuous struts connected back to back on opposite side of gusset plate or a section or we will ignore this criteria is getting fulfilled by um, uh, with our question okay now what is the effective length so if you see effective heading is double angle strut only okay so the effective length kl in the plane of end gusset shall be taken as 0 0.7 and 0 0.85 times the distance between the interactions intersections now i can put the value of k in between 0 0.7 and 0 0.85 in between this i can put anyone so i'll directly take 0 0.85 okay so 0 0.85 is clear now now you can put this value so i'll come back to the numerical again so what will be the value of k here it will be 0 0.85 and which uh, criteria i have used i have mentioned here so my lambda value will be what is the value of k it is 0 0.85 what is the value of l here value of l is uh, 3 meter that is 3000 mm divided by r minimum what was the value of r minimum we have tried certain section and for that r minimum was i think 19.6 so the value of lambda here will be 130.1 and there is another criteria it should be less than 180 that's why okay okay now next step we have calculated lambda also now the next step is step number six buckling class and i have told you already buckling class will always be c for the angle section so that will be my step step number six 
that is buckling class okay now let's find out so i can directly write down what buckling class will be c for any angle section for any angle section buckling class will be c only buckling class is c and why because it is given on page number 44 page number 44 clause number i'll also mention here or you i'll mention directly the table number it is given in table number 10 okay buckling class is c page number 44 you can check that now it is also over what is the next step then the next step is calculation of design compressive stress that is step number seventh here design compressive stress it is denoted by fcd okay so for fcd i have told you this also that you have to refer one table so i'll put here from table number 9c from table 9c and page number is what this is also i have told you it will be on page number 42 okay so the value of fcd will be equal to what is the value of fcd i'll show you let me open the page number 42 of is 800 see this is the page table number 9c design compressive stress fcd in mpa for buckling class c okay so i'm referring the correct table now page number 42 is here what is the value of lambda we have calculated it is 130.1 and here the value is 130 so it is not uh, so for 130 let's check what is the value for 130 the value is for 250 column because our fy yield stress is 250 the value is you can check it here it is 74.3 but r value is what 130.1 so it is getting reduced if the value this value is getting increased so what you will have to do you will have to do the interpolation now what will be the interpolation for 130 value the value is 74.3 for 140 value the value is 66.2 so what will be the value for 131 130.1 because our value is what 130.1 so for that the value is not given here you can do the interpolation it will be around 74. Point something it will be less than this 74.3 but approximately closer to this value 74.3 only okay so i'll directly do the interpolation and i'll calculate that you just remember for 130 value it is 74.3 and for 140 it is 66.2 okay so for 130 value the value is 74.3 for 140 the value is 66.2 what should be the value for 130.1 you can do the interpolation okay so the value of fcd after calculation will be 74.22 newton per mm square or mpa okay now we have calculated the value of fcd now what is the last step that is remaining we have to just find out the design strength that is the last step it will be step number eight design compressive strength so i'll put that design compressive strength and it is denoted by what it is denoted by pd and what is the formula for that pd will be equal to area into fcd you can put directly area into fcd now what is the area c i have told you it is double angle so i'll multiply it by 2 and what was the area we have assumed let's go back see we had tried this section which one it was that 65 65 8 so for single angle the area was 976 so i'll put 976 you can check it in the steel table and value of fcd we have calculated as 74.22 so the value of pd here will be 144.88 kilonewton and it is obviously greater than pu now what is the value of pu they have given see this 144.88 kilonewton is greater than 135 kilonewton that is given in the numerical so that's why i can finally say that you can use or uh, design i'll write like this design uh, we, we will not use word design here you can directly you uh, 
we can directly write like this provide because we have designed this now so i'll put therefore provide what was isa it was 2 isa 65 65 8 mm whose area with area area was what 976 mm square for single angle provide this section for a uh, for uh, for carrying uh, we will write down like this for carrying a factored load of what factor load of what see factor load is 135 kN for a factored load of 135 kN that's it so for 135 kN uh, resistance we will provide double angle 65 65 8 for double angle discontinuous strut okay so this was the video on design of double angle strut thank you